والصلاه والسلام على رسوله النبي الامي وعلى اله وصحبه اجمعين وبعد my dear respected brothers and elders uh, we are on aphorism number 18 it's number 17 from the book but because of the confusion from yesterday aphorism number 17 18 we have switched around in delivery so yesterday we did 18 on uh, ambitious desires and today we are doing 17 it's the 18th that we are doing today on companionship on companionship making friends and who we choose to be our company this my dear friends is one of the most important concepts not just in tasawwuf but in islam on whom we make our friends who we choose or whom we choose to be our company in the quran allah subhanahu wa ta'ala he describes the day of judgment in various verses la yasalu hamimun hamima the hamim will not ask regarding a hamim on the day of judgment meaning a, a friend will not inquire regarding his or her friend on the day of judgment hamim down here is not an, your standard facebook or twitter friend hamim down here is that friend who is there in this dunya you know, as they say, to take a bullet for you. Hameem is from Hami al ma when water boils, or Humma, when you have temperature of fluid, in Arabic it's called Humma. So the word Hameem derives from this word, meaning this friend is such a friend that the, the, the passion to help you, the passion to uh, be there for you is boiling in their heart. A very close friend. But on the day of judgment, this friend will not, lo- will not know you any longer. يَوْمَ يَفِرُّ الْمَرْءُ مِنْ أَخِيهُ وَأُمْنِهِ وَأَبِيهُ وَصَاحِبَتِهِ وَبَنِيهِ لِكُلِّ مِرْئِمْ مِنْهُمْ يَوْمَ إِنِ شَأْنُ يُغْنِي The Quran mentions people will be running, family members, brothers from their parents, parents from their children, brothers and sisters will not want to see one another. So these relationships, لَا أَنْسَابَ بَيْنَهُمْ يَوْمَ إِذِنْ وَلَا يَتَسَاءَلُونَ will not exist on the day of judgment. People will not ask regarding one another. However, there is one type of relationship. There is one type. Uh, of, per, of a person that will benefit you even on that day, the day where your own mother and father will not ask, and that is Al Akhilla U Yoma Idin Ba'adum li Ba'adin Adu illa al Muttaqin. Those friends who kept friendship based upon taqwa and piety. The friendship and the relationship that is based upon these values, the values of taqwa, the value of piety. The value of the Akhirah. They're, they're your friends. Why? Because they want good for you. Not only in this life, but they want good for you in the Akhirah. They're those people who are there to advise you. Who don't want anything in return. Like the Sahaba would say, لا نريد منكم جزاء ولا شكورا. We don't want any thank you. We don't want any payment in return. They advise you solely for the purpose of and, and, and solely the wajhillah for the pleasure of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala this type of friend my dear friends if you find him cling on to him if you find a friend like this do not lose a friend like this a friend who's there to advise you and he doesn't want anything in return you find very few friends like this today Majority, most of the relationships are based on a sort of transactional understanding. You scratch my back, I'll scratch yours. You be there for me and I'll be there for you. It's like a, it's like a transaction. It's not even friendship, it's transaction. Because if they do it for you, then you do it for them. Whereas this friendship that the Quran mentions, is that friendship that they whatever they do, they don't, they don't expect you doing anything. They do it for Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. They do for Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And Umar radiallahu wa ta'ala, one of the things that he said that I wish I have from the three things, that I have a friend who's there to tell me when I'm wrong, who's there to advise me. So companionship, they say uh, that you are who you associate with. And even psychologically, there's psychological research done on this, that a person is actually made of the five people that he uh, associates with so your closest five people that's what will determine who you are 
your closest five, four, five people will determine who you are. And we have to be very, very careful who we make our friends. This doesn't mean that we are nasty and we are vile and rude to people. No. What this means is that our personal life who we share with, uh, our time that's valuable who we give it to, it can't be any person. When you go into the shop and you want to buy fruit, for example, you put apple inside the bag, you don't grab any apple. You look at the apple and and you put place it in the bag. It's shopping, that's something that we do on a daily basis. Or if you go to a market and you want to buy yourself clothes, you don't just blindly just grab the clothes and put it into the trolley, you look. Is it good for me? Is it worth me buying this? Or better your car, you don't buy any car blind, blindly. So a friendship is a very important concept. They can either make your dunya and akhirah or destroy your dunya and akhirah. How can we be so naive in just making anybody our friends? So there's a, there's a fine distinction between uh, so, uh, people that you know and you, you know, salam, kalam and that. But friends down here is a very important relationship. It's that person who, you, who is there for you, who you can... Uh, share your personal experiences, your personal problems, and there who will, who will be there to give you the correct advice. Yes, not the concept of friendship that we have on social media today. These are not your friends, my dear friends. The social media friends, they're not your friends. Please do not be misled by shaitan in thinking they're your friends. They are not your friends. They're, they're just there to like your post and to give you that drilling of uh, dopamine. You feel happy, and when they don't like your post, you feel down. That's the. <laughs> That's the concept of friendship, of social media friendship. That's not friends. Tag is friend, but it's not really your friends. A friend is this, who is there to give you benefit. Benefit either of this world or the Akhirah. And primary should be the Akhirah. Because the benefit and harm of this dunya is momentarily, is temporary, is transient. It will finish. Prophet ﷺ said, Al maru ala dini khalil. A person follows the religion of their friend. Meaning whatever the friend does, habits, uh, beliefs, mentality, a person will, uh, will adopt. فَلْيَنظُرْ أَحَدُكُمْ إِلَىٰ مَنْ يُخَالِ Prophet ﷺ gave advice. Therefore, each and every single one of you should be considerate, be careful. فَلْيَنظُرْ فَلْيَنظُرْ is نَظَرْ Which means to contemplate, to consider, to think of who, of whom they make their friends. May Allah give us, may Allah give us good company. Amen. Ya ayyuhalladheena amanu attaqullah Allah instructs O believers, fear Allah wa kunu ma'as sadiqeen and be in the company of the sadiqeen those who are truthful, those who are pious those who have good character those who have good habits we have to find people like this and stay in their company especially in the, in the environment that we, we are living in our start, may Allah preserve him, will say in class banni me waqt Banta hai, lagta hai. Banne mein waqt, lagta hai. Bigarne mein waqt, nahi lagta. That to, to become something, it takes time. But to get destroyed, it takes one wrong majlis, one wrong gathering and you're finished. I used to say to a lot of students that used to uh, go home for holidays, because madrasa students used to be in the environment of Qala Allah, Qala Rasul, 24 hours, you know, either Quran, Hadith, Tajweed, Tafsir, and now you're going to holidays and you meet all types of friends and people. So be careful in whose gathering you sit. Because one gathering can destroy your mentality. You can change the way of thinking. And how many people have you seen that change? They change in time and time. They've gone to university, they've come back, what's happened to you, yeah? Yeah, salam. A relative of mine, I'm going to mention his name. The exact same thing. Very good household, very good company. Parents, mashallah, parents try their best. You know, no parent wants the child to be a bad child. Every parent wants the child to be a good, good person. Even though they might be bad themselves, but they want the child to be good. He went to university, come back. And uh, I met him and he started asking me, what is the evidence that ijma and qiyas, ijma is consensus, qiyas is analogy. These are the usul of the Ahlul Sunnah, 
Shawafi and Maliki, Hanabila, and the Hanafiya, they all agree on these four principles of Quran, Sunnah, Ijma and Qiyas. Quran is the first point of evidence. If there's no evidence in the Quran, then you look in the Sunnah. If there's no evidence in the Sunnah, then you look in the Ijma, the consensus of the scholars. If there's no evidence in the Ijma, then the Qiyas, the analogy, Ijtihad of the, pers the scholars, personal Ijtihad, Qiyas. So he was asking, he was, and I said, where have you heard this from? Obviously he was hanging around with the, those who say, just Quran Hadith, Quran Hadith. He was hanging around with that sort of environment. And unfortunately that environment is quite uh, prevalent in the universities. They've taken over all the universities. They unfortunately represent mainstream Islam, which they don't really, but in, 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 in the universities they do. So he was with those people, you know, Quran and authentic Hadith. No such thing as Ijma, no such thing as Qiyas, no such I said, where have you heard this? Oh, did you answer me? <laughs> and I realized the same student, few days went to university and then this. And then later on he became a Rafid the Shia. A uh, discussion now with Billah, he believed Abu Bakr Umar to be Kafir and stuff with Allah. <laughs> company. That's what happens. Company is my dear friend, company is everything. One wrong gathering and your mentality changes. So we have to be very careful who we keep our company with. And you, have, you might have seen those elders or many of our uh, family members, mashallah, who are not very academic. Simple people. But because they've been keeping good company, they've been going to the masjid, sitting here, you know, good company. Mashallah, they're okay. So today, in this day and age, my dear friends, company, very, you have to make good company. Because the company outside is not good. If you don't actively go out and look for good company, by default, you'll be in a bad company. Because this is how the world is today. And especially the youngsters that are going to universities, Al-Amanul Hafiz, Wal-Iyadu Billah. The whole university system is based upon doubt, skepticism, Cartesian philosophy. Is that... Am I, am, am I actually seeing things? Is this, you know, you know the Matrix movie? It's actually based on this, on this, on this philosophy. Now what I'm seeing, is it, is it actually, a, is it true existence or is it just a delusion? Is it all a dream? Doubts. If you are in an environment where everything's about doubts and questioning and skepticism, is, is this going to, this is going to affect the Iman? Because Iman is about certainty. Iman is about Yaqeen. And the entire university system from Alif to Ya, from beginning to end, is based on the skepticism. Isn't it? Yes or no? And the second thing, questioning. Islam, Islam encourages to question, but there's a, there's a way of questioning, there's a type of question. In university, the first assignment you do, what do they tell you? Critical thinking. Critical? Critical thinking is a significant component of your uh, degree or your masters or your module that you're doing you have to have critical th thinking and the more you uh, provide critical thinking the higher your mark is yes subhanallah do critical thinking without even knowing how to think properly they don't even teach you how to think coherently before you think coherently Critical thing. You can only critically think if you know how to think properly. So this is why we have these problems today, of ego, of of questioning everything, of qu questioning authority. There's a book, very good book. You should uh, buy this book. It's written by a Western academic. It's called The Death of Expertise. Nobody believes in expertise today. Everybody's expert, and especially within our Pakistani com community, Jazakumullah wa khaira. Everybody's a mufti and everybody's an al a doctor. In the work, uh, in this pandemic. We've, uh, this has transpired, especially you know your aunties are sending you things about coronavirus, how to cure coronavirus, and they'll tell you, uh, they'll, they'll, they'll tell you, mashallah, a lot of things. So this this mentality today, my dear friends, the reason this mentality has been developed is because of the companies, this environment we are living is like this. So we have to, we have to look out for those people who are well grounded in their knowledge, who have good character, good akhlaq, who are who are. You know, who, good, good role models for you. Who, who, who you look at, they remind you of Allah and His Rasul. They remind you of the deen. We have to find people like this today. Yeah. Oh. 
So the first aphorism, this section is only two sides. Imam, the Imam mentioned, لا تصحب من لا ينهدك حال ولا يدلك على الله مقال الله أكبر. How profound. Do not, this is, this is, this is a khalas. This is a principle from the Sufiyah. This is what you should do. Do not keep company with anyone whose state does not inspire you and whose speech does not lead you to Allah. Don't even keep, keep company like this. There is nothing more beneficial for the traveler than pious companionship. Hence the Shaykh Rahimahullah states the principle of this regard so that the traveler understands, traveler meaning the one who is traversing the spiritual ranks, understands a company that will be beneficial and harmful for him. Never choose the company of a man who does not inspire you toward Allah. Never. And my dear friends, you, you, you will see, you will see the, that when you, when you keep bad company, it doesn't matter how good you are, you will have it. It'll have an effect, inevitable effect. This is why the Prophet ﷺ said, hadith reported by Imam Bukhari, the method of Jalis al Salih and Jalis Su, that the example of a good company, a good companion, and a bad companion is the example of a person who is trading, who is selling musk perfume, and the other who is a blacksmith. The person who is selling musk, you either buy from him, if you don't buy from him, at least you will derive benefit of the smell from him. But a blacksmith who is uh, hitting iron and metal with flames and dust and smoke. Staying in that company, it'll either you burn your clothes or you will have minimum bad smell coming onto your, onto your body. This is the example. This is about how you can be Junaid Baghdadi, my dear friends. Do not keep bad company. Full stop. You know, sometimes Shaitan tells you, I'm going to go there, I'm going to save it. Yeah. I'm going to go and change the environment. Listen. <laughs> I'm going to save the world. You're not going to change the environment. You're going to go there and first day you might Tuba Tuba, Astaghfirullah, Astaghfirullah. Second day, what are they doing? You see. Third day, I'll have a try too. Yes, insan is. The state of the companion should be such that his entire attention is focused on Allah. The gaze of his heart should be diverted from creation. In every affair, his complete reliance should be on Allah. In his lofty estimate, creation should have no significance and no rank. Obedience to the sacred law in all affairs should have become his natural disposition. His speech should guide toward the path of Allah. Such a person is qualified for companionship. This is the criteria, my dear friends, according to the Sufia, who, should make, who, who you should make your friends. High bank balance, he's got a nice car, he's got a nice job, he's got a lot of money to give out. No, the criteria is that this person just reminds you of Allah and his Rasul. Khlas. Nothing else. Then the Shaykh says, you can make him your friend. Jalo, make him your friend. A man who lacks the aforementioned qualities is of no benefit. That's the reality, my dear friends. No benefit. In fact, his company is harmful. Even if overtly he has the appearance of a sin. Even though he might, like, he might have a pugly on like me. Yes, he might be speaking like me, but if he's not pious, if he's not God-fearing, he doesn't have the qualities of a muttaqi, don't just look at his attire. Don't be fooled by his attire. Since his heart's relationship is with alien objects, meaning things other than Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, his heart, his qalb, his heart is attached with the dunya. He's going to make you a dunya person. Have you ever sat, sat amongst those relatives and friends? The only thing they talk about is money, 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 koti, 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 money, money, money. You start getting depressed, thinking, you know what, even I need to make a koti in Pakistan. <laughs> then you realize, wait, 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 calm now, one second. Do I? No, I don't. <laughs> okay. Effect, naturally, it has an effect. His companionship is bound to exercise its influence. This is inevitable, my dear, inevitable, my dear friends. It will happen. Company has an effect. To think that I'm immune to company, you are in cuckoo land. Those in his association will be similarly affected by his detrimental influence. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala save us. The person hadith, 
famous hadith, authentic hadith reported by Imam Muslim, rahimahullah, the person who committed 99 murders. And then he, was, he asked another person, is there forgiveness for me? The guy said, nah, 99, you're not going to turn any time soon. So I thought, Amar is a complete century, killed him, 100. And then he went to a scholar, to an alim. He said, yes, but you, have, you cannot stay in this environment here. This is toxic for you. The reason you are committing murder after murder is because of the environment that you are in. <coughs> so he was advised to change his environment, change his company. He, he couldn't stay in that same city where he was born and bred maybe. He grew up there, but he was committing all the sins in that area. Rubbama, this is why in Jumaat they also say to go out from your locality. And the reason to that is the same, based on the same concept of company. You go out, you stay in good company, good environment, it has an effect on a person. The environment that you are in at home, a person does not understand. Next aphorism, رُبَّمَا كُنْتَ مُسِيئًا فَأَرَاكَ الْإِحْسَانِ مِنْكَ صُحْبَتُكَ مَنْ هُوَ أَسْوَأُ حَالًا مِنْكَ Ya Allah, you might be in a bad state, you might be a bad person. Your associating with one who is a worse state makes you see virtue in yourself. Meaning, you should keep company of people who are better than you. Because if you are bad and you keep company of people who are worse, you think you are Junaid al-Baghdadi. I'm really good, me, because he's worse than me. Whereas you are bad yourself. It is important for the believer to acquire the companionship of a person better than himself. In such company, you will see your own faults and you will become concerned with your moral and spiritual reformation. When you have company that's better than you, they're praying more Qur'an than you, they're uh, reciting more Qur'an, they're praying more Salah, they have control over their tongue, over, over their eyes, they're constantly like this. If you're in that company, you'll think, I need to, I need to change, I need to change, I need to change, I need to change, I need to change. I need to change, I need to change. You'll constantly think of changing your life. But if you're in a company of a person who is worse than you, you'll think, I've made it, Jannat al firdaus I've made it. I'm a bazurg. Because the people around me, they don't even do half of what I do. This will lead to gurur, it will lead to takabbur, pride, self amazement, vanity, etc. In such company, you will see your own faults and you will become concerned with your moral and spiritual reformation. On the other hand, if you sit in the company of a man who a man who's worse than yourself, its necessary consequence will be that despite your evil, you will regard yourself to be pious. You will most certainly gain the impression that you are better than him. Thus, your own deficiencies will not become visible. Discernible meaning visible. Your own deficiency will not. You will see your own faults. Because you, the guy the next to you is worse than you. So you're always concentrating on his bad things. You will be overtaken by vanity and self-amazement and be pleased with yourself. May Allah protect us. Should never be pleased with ourselves. Our nafs never, never ever. The last aphorism: "Ma sahibaka illa man sahibaka wa huwa bi'aybika alim, wa laysa thalika illa maulak al karim. Khairun man tashabu man yatlubuka laka la li shayin yahud minka ilay." Subhanallah. Beautiful. No one is a companion of yours except the one who, while knowing your defects, is your companion. Meaning, the true definition of companion is that companion who is your friend and who is your companion even though they know your faults. And that is only your generous Allah. That is only your Allah who knows who you are. You know your sins, knows your faults, but it still does, does not disregard you. The best one to take on as a companion is He, meaning Allah, who does not seek you out for the sake of something coming from you to Him. The friendship, the commentator mentioned, the friendship of worldly people is generally fickle. It changes with the vicissitudes of time. One day they're okay, one day they're like this. You know, it depends on the weather <laughs> in this country. <laughs> yes? When they discover one's faults, they never they sever ties and develop a dislike for the former friend. Once they know your faults, that's it. They're not the same with you again. That's why there's a narration from Sayyidina Ali radiallahu ta'ala an, Ahbib habibaka hawnamma, asa an yakuna baghiduka yawmamma, 
وأبغض بغيضك هونما عسى أن يكون حبيبك يوم ما That when you make, when you love someone Love them in moderation Keep friendship in moderation Why? Because one day they will become your enemy And if that person becomes your enemy Is a bad person He's gonna put all your stuff on Daily Mail He's gonna publicize everything Doesn't that happen? How many times have you seen Close friends They've exposed one another Or doing it for the sake of Allah now Yeah, <laughs> yeah, doing it for the sake of Allah Yeah, right When you were friends At that time you didn't think of doing it for the sake of Allah Now because he's not your friend Now you want to expose him for the sake of Allah Jude lying. Yeah. If you're gonna keep enemies, yeah. or Patanos or no. If you're gonna keep enemies, even them keep it in moderation. Moderation, you know, just don't hate each other too much. Some of the enemies enmity that we Ya Salam, Allah keep an they don't talk to each other, the children don't talk to each other, the brothers don't talk to each other, they can't cross the same road. <laughs> There's so many attachments and strings attached. If you're going to keep enemies, even that do with moderation. Don't overdo it. Why? Because one day they will become your friends and then you're going to regret. Oh yeah, I was so harsh to him, I was so cruel, I, I held all this. It's going to be embarrassing. So, so, but the Creator maintains, the Creator, He maintains His relationship with His servant despite being aware of the innumerable deficiencies. Only He should be one's true companion, for despite having full knowledge of the faults of His servants, He is always there for people to turn to. لا تحزن إن الله معنا. Prophet said to Abu Bakr Siddiq radiallahu ta'ala, Do not worry, Allah is with us. Allah is our companion. Those servants of Allah who have cultivated, cultivated meaning made, produced in themselves states of excellence also maintain their relationship with the person after discovering their defects. This is a sign of a wali, this is a sign of a pious person that even though they know the defects and the faults of people, it doesn't affect them. They don't judge them. They carry on being uh, normal. This is a sign of muttaqi. Yes. And why are they doing this with people? Because this is how Allah treats with us. If we're going to treat people because of the faults that we find out about them badly, then imagine if Allah did that with us. Allah doesn't do that with us. Despite knowing our sins and faults, Allah carries on treat, treating us with kindness. Do you not wish that Allah forgives you? Meaning, we should forgive people. We should forgive people. Just by forgiving people, overlooking their Faults and everything, Allah will forgive us in return. Those servants of Allah who have cultivated in themselves states for excellence also maintain their relationship with the person after discovering their defects. They will conceal even the greatest sin that they see in their associates. Allahu Akbar. This is what a believer does. This is what a mu'min does. When they see the fault of their brother, they hide it, they conceal it. The Prophet ﷺ said, Man satar akhahu Muslim, whoever conceals and hides the faults of their brother, Allah will hide their sins on the day of judgment. This is what a Muslim does, not today, that any, any faults we find first thing on social media, expose. Yeah. Instead of trying to protect the brother, conceal their sins, Publicize them all in the name of Deen. Ah, if it's done publicly, then expose expose should be done publicly. But if it's private, then it is not allowed, my dear friends, to expose your Muslim brother. And to do it on the pretense that you are defending the Deen, this is a waswasa and the teaching of Shaitan. You are not doing any favors <laughs> to the Deen by exposing the sins and the faults of your Muslim brother or sister. And today this is very relevant because of the social media. Within a few minutes, uh, people can, can be exposed.
And remember this is a hadith. Whoever exposes their Muslim brother. Again, public expose if a person is publicly calling towards kufr, for example, or innovation and they're doing publicly doing something wrong, then we have to publicly want that's different. Talking about the context here is private. Whoever exposes their Muslim brother or sister. Allah will humiliate this person even though they're sitting at home. Yes, this is a promise. This will happen. This is a promise of the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. This is a promise of Allah. This will happen. If you, ex if you try to expose your Muslim brother and sis or sister just to vent your own ego, thinking that I'll get one over them, remember, Allah is watching. Allah will humiliate you even though you are sitting in your own home. May Allah Ta'ala save us. So they will conceal even the greatest sin that they see in their associates. They do not sever tie their relationship. Thus a man should establish his relationship with his Lord or with those who are linked to his Lord. Your best friend is a person who strives for your welfare without having any motive of self-gain for himself. This is your best friend, the one who is there just for your benefit. Now, what do I get in return, yeah? Righteous Muslims also desire good for people, even their enemies. They do not cherish any hope for personal gain because their hearts have been completely purified of egotistical, egotistic motives. Their, their, their nafs has been purified. They don't want anything in return. Their gaze is only on Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Their relationship with people is purely for the sake of Allah. One of the people that will stand, will sit, in the uh, in the shade of the throne of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala on that day where there will be no shade except for the shade of Allah's throne are those people who love one another for the sake of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala who met who had companionship and relationship for the sake of Allah it is essential then to establish a bond with the righteous and to abandon all other friendships that are based on lowly motives based on dunya based on sin and entertainment etc may Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala give us good company May Allah give us all good company. And may Allah make all the believers as a means of good company. Mm -hmm. Yes, there was a time, yes, where the non Muslims would travel. This is recorded in the books of Seer and Tariq. When the non Muslims would travel and they would have a daughter to keep the daughter safe, they say, give it to a Muslim house. Give it to a Muslim household. Because we have trust that the Muslims will look after our daughter. They will not do anything inappropriate to our daughter. Allahu Akbar. Do you know why Andalus Spain was conquered? Yes. Tariq bin Ziyad, he came with his army. It was a uh, military intervention. But the initial request was by the people of Spain. The people, the Christians, the non-Muslims of Spain, they requested the Islamic government to come and rule over them. Because the Islamic government and the and the... Uh, the adal, the justice of the Muslims were well known. It was well known. They were making dua, the Muslims rule over. I wish Muslims rule over us. And today, what do we say? You're buying a car, buy it from, don't buy it from Pakistani Muslim. They lie too much. Astaghfirullah. Mm -hmm. This is true. In Bradford, it happens all the time. We are, don't buy from Apna. I'm going to buy a car from Apna, it's going to be, this going to roll the mileage back. It's gonna they'll do some fraud. One brother was telling me that he rings when he's buying a car. Astaghfirullah. This is this is a sad reality. He rings as soon as uh, the, he says Assalamu alaikum. They say Wa alaikum assalam. He puts the phone down. <laughs> he's a Muslim. La ilaha illallah. We are two or three percent in this country. Thirteen percent in the jail. We are two or three percent in England. Thirteen percent are in the jail. This is these are facts. These are statistics. Check. May Allah Ta'ala make all the Muslims good company. Amen. We, should, we should be, we, we were known, my dear friend, the Muslims were known for be, to be good company. Even the non-Muslims accepted this. The Muslims are good company. We can trust with our daughter. We can trust our daughters with Muslims. And today, these grooming gangs that we have, that's how, in different parts of the country. Who are they? You know, Tommy Robinson. <laughs> May Allah give him a hidayat. That Islamophobe. Yeah? I mean, He's, 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 he's an outright Islamophobe. There's no doubt about that. He's, a, he's, he's, a, he's, 
He said, but do you blame him though? In one way. If he's experienced Muslims like this, and that's, that's why he uses his arguments. He paints the entire Islam because of things like this. Obviously what he's doing is incorrect, the methodology is incorrect. You don't look at a few people, you don't judge the entire religion because of a few people. But the thing is, we're psychological beings. If we see, if, if I go to a company, if I go to a company, and the people who are working for that company, or the people who are representing that company, they might not be the actual people of the company, they're probably just workers, standard workers. But their character, if their character puts me off, I'll get off the company. Yes or no? When I say no, I cannot judge the entire company who has 10 branches up and down the country based on two or three workers. This is methodologically and epistemologically wrong. Nobody thinks like this. We are psychological beings. This is the reality today, my dear friends. That yes, Islam is beautiful, Islam is in the books and everything. But where is Islam in the Muslims? Where is that companionship? Where is that good character? Where is that subhanallah? We can't even stand in the queue. <laughs> Never mind anything else. May Allah have mercy on us. May Allah have mercy on our situation. And may Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala not not just us, but purify the entire Ummah through the blessed month of Ramadan. This month is a blessed month. And inshallah, it's not difficult for Allah that Allah can change the situation of the Ummah. Inshallah. The Ummah, alhamdulillah, despite our weaknesses, the Ummah still has a lot of khair. The Ummah still has a lot of khair. It still has a lot of goodness inside them. Alhamdulillah. Muslims still have a lot of khair and good. The biggest khair and good that we have is the Iman. La ilaha illallah Muhammad Rasulullah. And inshallah, through the barakah of this iman, through the barakah of Ramadan, Allah can inshallah rectify and reform our situation. And may Allah do so. 